what I found uh, in the book is actually it's it's a manifold uh, way of differentiate the term uh, religious authority. For example, um, we we find um, reflections on the plurality of actors and the institutions claiming and manifesting authority in terms of hierarchy. That's a very important differentiation in itself, structure, ideology, and text. We find dialectic relations, I would call it, uh, dynamics and power games, that's also my term here, between religious digital individuals and the traditional churches. And we find also reflections on the tensions between traditional institutionalized and new innovative forms of religious identity building authority and what I would call multi-level participatory responsibility. So um, overall, I find the book very inspiring because a religious authority is, it's worked out as being closely related to multifaceted processes of negotiation. I think that's a term we will come back to anyway. Second, some uh, next uh, steps on the definitions. So what's the main aim of the book? I think John will also come back to that, uh, to quote, uh, to, to find some deeper and gain some deeper insights in a certain phenomenon of religious active prosumers and new religious interpreters emerging within digital culture. So the differentiations again of the religious digital creatives are ethos and so Heidi looks at the ethos and motivations at performances core assumptions and um, justification narratives concerning the framing and relevance of technology as well as their own positioning towards the religious institutions and their um, traditional logic. Now to give you an insight into this differentiation on terms of the religious um, creatives themselves, it's actually three different kind of uh, phenomena. First of all, the digital entrepreneurs. She speaks also of media influencers. And just to, to take one quote, uh, um, a person from, from the Netherlands says, I'm not official, but authoritative. Okay. So the authority is framed in a power paradigm. For example, uh, now looking at the internet evangelists, um, they see themselves as rather a positional outsiders beyond traditional religious structures. And they are somehow in a mode, I would call it a mode of blurring online and offline contexts. That's the first group. Se the second group she calls the digital spokespersons and, and sees them as thought leaders. In brackets, I wonder whether the other two groups do not think, but we'll come back to that. So the idea of them is to putting the church's best face forward. That's quoted by an Anglican uh, spokesperson. The authority is not now not framed in the power paradigm, but, but in a role paradigm. So they see themselves and they're also perceived as gatekeepers. They are appointed, that's in terms of the professional dimension, they are appointed by the institution and they are inside traditional religious structures. And the mode of work, of performance, of articulation is of bridging distinct online and offline contexts. So it's not the blurring, it's the bridging. The third group is the what she calls the digital strategists, digital leaders, also um, um, here, a, so to say, a label. And they do theological, I would call it theological work uh, with the aim of reforming the institution. And I find most interesting to, that she brings up the term authority as a rela relational term, speaks also of hybrid authority. And you can think here, for example, um, um, in, in, in the, to the practice of online ministers, of the practice of online ministers. And they now have dual commitments. They live um, and work and articulate themselves in spheres of influence due to their institutional and digital expertise. Which, what would I call again, the mode and Heidi speaks of, the, of blending online and offline contexts. Okay, 
My last slide uh, is now really open questions and for further discussion and research. I've put up three questions. The first I would call the ecclesiological dimension. And I um, would like very much like to, to, to maybe discuss with Heidi and, and all of you, what actually is meant by the term new expressions of church and outreach, or even a transforming new church. Are transformative shifts expected to be evolutionary or revolutionary? Disrupt Does Heidi have a, uh, that was what I was thinking by reading the book. Does she have an ecclesiological normative, maybe US contextual background vision of the church? So is there something behind it um, like institution organization versus part participatory movements and learning networks? Um, and connected to that ecclesiological dimension, I'd like to ask Ken Shaw must the normal ministers become online ministers. I know that today also a lot of church people gather here. So this might be interesting to see. Can, shall, must any normal minister become an online minister? And if so, in which sense? Second question is a, concerning the theological dimension. What actually is the new substance of the missional? So the missional approach is something she, she really finds out in, in all three groups, I would say. Uh, but I was asking myself, what is meant by that substance of mission? What, what's, the, what's the new thing? And does theology transform? And if so, in which sense? What is meant by participatory and collaborative theology? So again, are the new theological imaginaries, I'd like to take up a term by Charles Taylor, are they evolutionary or disruptive? And finally, um, especially aiming at further research, what about the perceptions and impacts of the active presumers performances on the other side? So what do we know about authority on the side of the audiences, of the followers, of the disciples, of the public? And are there differences between text and image perceptions? I think I uh, haven't read so much in the book about the actually the, the, the image performances, how do they work with images, with pictures, with um, kind of showing up as persons or in which surrounding, in which context and so forth. And finally, in terms of perceptions, it is probably more than just the numbers. There is one section where, where Heidi comes to that, but what exactly? Can we in any sense measure sustainability? Can we measure some form of perception in these different public audiences <clears> of <throat> followers, disciples, and the public? Thank you so much, Thomas. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a real kind of treat for me to be able to kind of see and hear people directly who read the book, what they got out of it, the questions that are still lingering, and the issues that it kind of got them to think about. So thank you so much, Thomas, for sharing that. 